the CDC and FDA reported that outbreak of lung injury associated with the use of e-cigarette or vaping products. What are e-cigarettes? They update on the crisis notes. There are currently 1,479 confirmed and probable lung injury cases associated with use of e-cigarette or vaping in the U.S. An electronic cigarette is a battery-operated device that emits doses of vaporized nicotine or non-nicotine solutions for the user to inhale. They're also sometimes called vapes and vape pens. Vaping is the process of inhaling an aerosol that is created by heating a liquid or wax containing various substances, such as nicotine, cannabinoids, such as tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabidiol, flavoring, and additives such as glycerol, propylene glycol. E-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury, EDALI, also called vaping-associated pulmonary injury, initially described in 2019, is an acute or subacute respiratory illness that can be severe and life-threatening. Approximately 70% of patients have been male, and 80% are under 35 years old, range 13 to 75 years. What's in e-cigarettes? What are risk factors of e-cigarette-induced lung injury? It is not clear how often vaping can cause lung problems or who is at the highest risk. The key risk factor for EVALI is use of an e-cigarette or similar product. No single constituent has been identified that is common to all cases. While the majority of patients report use of products containing tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, 75 to 80%, approximately 40% use both THC and nicotine-containing products, and 15% use products with nicotine but not THC. The majority use products gained from off the street or informal such as friends and family member sources. History talking is important to find out of vaping or other use of e-cigarette related products. What type of vaping device, bottle, cartridge, pod, did you use? What products were vaped? Nicotine, tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabidiol, flavored liquid. Did you reuse a cartridge or pod? Were they filled with homemade, unlicensed products? Did they also smoke tobacco? How often was the patient vaping? Second, they have respiratory symptoms and gastrointestinal symptoms. Respiratory symptoms include shortness of breath, 87%, cough, 83%, chest pain, 55%, pleuritic chest pain, 38%, and hemoptysis, 11%. Constitutional symptoms of subjective fever and chills were reported by 81 and 58%, respectively. Gastrointestinal symptoms were common, 81%, and included nausea, 70%. Vomiting, 66%, diarrhea, 43%, and abdominal pain, 43%. Fever was present in 31%. 67% were hypoxemic, with a pulse oxygen saturation of less than or equal to 88% in 30%. A third doctor will have to rule out other infectious and inflammatory diseases in the lung. They need to test PCR, rapid test, respiratory viral panel, urine antigen tests for Legionella and Streptococcus pneumonia, blood cultures, sputum culture. Bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar lavage may be needed. Chest X-ray and chest CT. The majority of patients chose diffuse, hazy, or consolidative opacities in chest X-ray and chest CT. Bilateral opacities are typical. The case definition criteria include the following. Use of an e-cigarette or related product in the previous 90 days. Lung opacities on chest radiograph or computed tomography CT. Exclusion of lung infection based on negative influenza polymerase chain reaction PCR or viral and bacteria culture or bronchoalveolar lavage if performed and testing for HIV-related opportunistic infections. Vaping associated lung injury can be difficult to diagnose. Currently, we need to study more to find out pathogenesis of lung injury due to e-cigarettes or vaping products.